Hey everyone, it's Angie Coley coming to you today from beautiful and cold New Orleans, Louisiana. You are seeing my uh, wonderful Airbnb here. Um, today I wanted to talk to you about having people in your corner when you're starting a business or when you're growing a business. Um, not all of us have that luxury. I've certainly been on both sides of the fence where I had people that really believed in me and supported me and cheered me on. Uh, and I had others that, let's just say they weren't really all that supportive, not really even helpful. And don't get me wrong, uh, not everybody's going to be able to see the vision. So you're going to have some people that express doubt or concern and they only have your best interest at heart. Uh, but it's going to be critical as you grow your business to follow your own path, follow your own intuition, follow the people before you who have done the thing that you're trying to do versus listen to the people around you who can't see the vision the same way that you can. So usually this manifests in a couple of ways where you're talking to friends about wanting to quit your job and start a business or, or something to that effect. And they're like, well, I don't know, like steady paycheck. What about the benefits? Do you think you're going to be able to pay the bills? Like, oh my God, you're way braver than me. And those little fears, they're the insidious, they start to crawl in your brain and like make a home there and get you all freaked out. And what's really happening is they're transferring their fear. They would never do it because they're too scared. They're transferring their fear onto you. And that's really unfortunate. Like it's, I know that I've had that, especially with some family members that were really concerned that like I was quitting a really good paying job to start a business. They were worried about whether I would be able to pay the bills. They even offered to let me move back home, which I'm eternally grateful for having that support system. But I had to get comfortable with being very uncomfortable and explaining to people that this was the choice that I am making, that yes, I have actually put a lot of thought and time and research into this, that yes, I am taking this very consider, like I'm taking this very seriously. I have put aside money to support myself. I've weighed the pros and cons, and I've decided that it's in my best interest to follow the stream that I've built. And for me, it turned out all right. You know, I, I didn't get it right the first time. I, I have, I've written about it in other places where I've point blank, I've, I've failed at my first attempts at entrepreneurship and I wound up living in my car for a little while. Um, but I, I got a job. I got better at what I do, which is writing. And then I saved up money and I tried again. And I did better the second time around. <sighs> so there's that group of people that they mean well. They love you. They care for you. They're afraid for you. And so they share their worries and their concerns. And you know that that's coming from a place of love, which makes it a little bit hard. So you have to kind of draw firm boundaries around that and say, okay, hey, I hear you and I appreciate it. What I need from you right now is love and support. And I get that you're scared. I'm scared too. <laughs> it would really help me right now if we don't focus on the scary things and if we focus on everything that I've got going for me. So I'd love your help with that if you're available. I love turning it around and getting people to realize that they're kind of spiraling on a negative for me. And that usually short circuits it. But what if you've got somebody that just totally shits on your dreams? I have been in a relationship like that before with, uh, you know, thankfully now an ex-partner, but basically told me that this freelance idea that I had was me being conned by internet scammers, that there was no way that I was smart enough to be able to do this freelance thing. I was just fooling myself. I was deluding myself. And first of all, that's some control bullshit right there. That is an insecure person that is trying to keep you down. Um, cause incidentally enough, whenever I did start bringing in money, this person made jokes about me buying them a car. Didn't happen, obviously. Um, but what happens, right, I couldn't change him. And I urge you, if you're in a situation like that with someone that not only expresses fears and concerns and doubts, I mean, there's a healthy way, like I mentioned with family, where they're concerned about you and they're respectfully talking about fears. But if it's like my ex-partner where they're literally not just expressing fears, they're dumping on you. They're making it a personal attack. They're trying to tear down your dreams and make you feel bad for dreaming, make you feel stupid for dreaming. Ditch those people. You don't need them in your life. There are plenty of people out there that believe in you. There are like, get you 
a circle of entrepreneur friends. Find out where the people who are trying to start businesses are hanging out and go start making friends in that community. That's actually what turned it around for me and wound up leading to me leaving that partner that didn't believe in me and that tore down my dreams. I made friends with a bunch of writer buddies. And at one point I got to a stage where, you know, my income was healthy. My hobbies were great. I loved hanging out with my friends. I loved talking business with my buddies. And I hated coming home to my partner. And that was like the light bulb moment for me that like all of these other pieces are in place. My dreams are right on schedule and this one piece of the puzzle doesn't fit. So I realized that leaving a partner might not be doable right now. You know, if you've got shared expenses, if you've got kids, there's a, there's a bunch of different reasons why leaving a, an unsupportive partner may not be in the cards for you right now. If it's negative, if it's toxic, if it's personal, I highly urge you to sit with that and think about whether that is a person that deserves to be in your life. Um, and meanwhile, build up your support network of people that believe in you, people that have done the thing that you're trying to do and show you that it's possible every day because that network is going to be a good source of business. They're going to be a good source of buddies and cheerleaders that can help you when you're having a bad day. They're going to be a good source of problem solving and stopping you from agonizing over something for like months and months, saying this from experience, when there's a solution out there that you could implement in five minutes and be moving on to the next thing versus trying to figure it all out by yourself. The network is super, super important. Nobody builds a business alone. Nobody. Everybody who has ever built a successful business had help along the way. And here's the thing. You don't actually get brownie points for getting all the way to the end and having done it by yourself. Like you don't get to stand up on a pedestal with your trophy. Here, I'm going to use my water bottle as a trophy. Like, oh my God, I made it all the way to the end and I didn't have help from any single one of you bitches. That's not the way it works. Business people are generally really happy to help each other. Um, a rising tide lifts all boats. So... Yeah, that's what I've got for you today. Think about the people that are in your life and whether they are pushing you to do better, they're challenging you, they're supporting you in your vision, or whether they're tearing you down and trying to keep you under control or keep you in place. Surround yourself with the people that believe in you. Trust me, that's going to make a really big difference. I'm Angie Coley, and hey, if you really like this video, if you need to hear it today, share it with a friend. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, click like, click share, and let's go kick some ass.